What's going on everybody? It is your boy Tim back with another video just enjoying another beautiful day here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina Just taking a walk along the beach soaking in the sunshine The waves, you know the wind just a beautiful day beautiful day But I wanted to turn the camera on and do another sobriety video I have not done a sobriety video in quite some time and so I wanted to do one for all my sober folks out there and everybody who's fighting that battle. First off, I wanna say keep fighting, ladies and gentlemen, keep fighting. It is possible to win. And today I wanted to talk about the day I knew I was eventually gonna get sober. Now, it took me years after this day to finally get sober, blessed to be sober three and a half years now, I think, something like that. I don't really keep track of the days and the months and all that. But it did take me some years after this moment to finally get sober. But I do want to share this story because I think it's important and I think it can help some people who are still, you know, struggling with it. Just kind of let you know that it is possible and like, even though you might still be, you know, going back and forth and relapsing and still working the process, the day might come when like, you know, you know you're done, okay? And that day for me happened, um, I was living in Chattahoochee, Florida at the time. It's a little small town called Chattahoochee, Florida. I was living there and I was living in an RV at the time. And I remember, I remember that night very vividly. I'll never forget this day. Uh, I had been going back and forth the previous weeks, like really in the midst of, and some of y'all understand this, I was really in the midst of one of those cycles of I'd quit for a couple days and then I'd drink again. And I'd get really down on myself and I'd quit for about three days and I was like, I'm done, I'm never drinking again, and then I'd relapse again. You know, and it was one of them hard times. You know, sometimes you're working the process, but you might go a few weeks and then, no, but this was one of those really hardcore, quit for a couple days, thought I was done, then I relapsed and it'd be a real hard relapse. And then same thing would happen again next week. Like it was one of those really hard ones, okay? And it was, it was like so hard that like, I, I just got like fed up, okay? So I was sitting in my RV, sitting at that little bitty RV table um, staring at my fridge because I never kept like alcohol in the fridge like I was the type of drinker that I'm gonna drink whatever beer I buy because I was mainly a beer drinker sometimes wine whatever alcohol I buy I'm drinking all of it that night so every day I had to go to the store to buy alcohol so uh, you know it was like six o'clock my usual ready to get drunk time and I was sitting there standing at the fridge and I was like I really want to go get some alcohol and drink it because I had to walk down, the closest store was like a 10 minute walk. Had to walk down this big hill, you know, back up it, go into town, you know, like a 10 minute walk at this little marathon gas station in Chattahoochee, Florida that I would go to every single night. So I really want to go do that, but I was like, I don't, you know? And it was just, I, I remember I was just like, man, I'm, I'm over this, I'm tired of this. Every single night I have this same discussion, right? And I was like, you know what, Tim? We got to end this one way or the other right i said i can't keep going back and forth you know just feeling elated then feeling down in the dump i can't keep doing this i said we gotta win we gotta end this one way or the other i said either we're just gonna keep drinking or we're gonna quit one or the other and i'll admit at that time i think i was kind of trying to find justification to just keep drinking you know i had a family member sometime around that time who had for all intents and purposes drunk himself to death and there was a part of me that was like, screw it, it's, it's a family tradition. I'm gonna drink myself, I'm just gonna drink until I die like he did. Like I, I was fully aware that like, if I continued drinking, it was gonna lead to an early death. I, you know what I mean? There was no doubt in my mind. But there was a part of me that was like, whatever. I'm just, and, and some of y'all can relate to this. You just get tired of the back and forth. You just want it done one way or the other. So I was sitting there and I was staring at the fridge. Um, Man, just thinking do I want to go get alcohol so I got it I got to be over I got to be done with this I said you know what Tim if you can accept I said this to myself I said if you can accept that all the behavior that comes with you drinking is actually you if you can accept the fights and the anger and the ruined relationships and the car accidents and the urinating is people <laughs> that you're urinating on people and in people's cars and you know and, and and all the other stuff that comes with it the hangovers the blackouts you know 
the, the going to jail. If you, you know, if you can, if you can admit that all of that is you, if you can admit that all of that is you, then we can keep drinking. If you can take that on, if you can take on, at this point, I'd probably been like really drinking 12, 13 years, I don't know. If you can take on a decade plus of just all that shame and guilt and all that behavior that you like to say, oh, that's not me, that's the alcohol. If you can take all that on and accept it and say that that is you, then we'll keep drinking. I was like, but if you can't, then you have to stop. If we can't accept that that's us, then we'll have to stop because that can't be how people view us the rest of our life. If you're not cool with that, you're gonna have to stop. And like I said, at that moment, I was kind of looking for justification to just keep drinking and basically drink myself to death because I was over it. And there was a part of me that wished that I could come to terms with that and be like, okay, all right, that's me. I couldn't though, I could not. I remember sitting there at the table thinking about it and I said, and this wasn't a quick conversation. This was, you know, a while I've sat here because I had nothing else to do because all I ever used to do was drink at night. So the nights I didn't drink, I had a lot of free time. You know, when you're used to, you know, drinking from 5.30 to like 10.30, that's a long period of time when you're not drinking. You're just sitting there. So I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I can't. I want to, but I can't. I can't say that that's me. And, and, and over the years I've thought about this and I realized I, and I'm so blessed for this. I had such a good example with my parents and a lot of the older people that I was around when I was younger. I had such good examples of like good people, good adults, you know? So I, in my mind, all that stuff I was doing drunk was not what a good person does. That is not a good life. That is not a responsible person. That, that is not how you act. You know, um, if I didn't have all those good examples, who knows? I might have been able to be like, you know what, screw it. But I realized I had such good examples growing up of like how you're supposed to act. That I was like, I can't, I, that can't be me. It's not me, it's the alcohol, right? And I sat there and I sat there and I sat there and I was like, we gotta quit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, we gotta quit. We have to, because it's the only way we're gonna get peace because I needed peace. And I thought maybe if I gave in, it was like, well, I'm just gonna keep drinking, that would have given me peace, but I realized it couldn't. It couldn't. So I was like, the only way I'm ever gonna get peace is if I quit, and in that moment, I knew I was gonna quit. I knew. I didn't know when, I didn't totally know how, but I knew why. I knew why, because I was like, I will never be at peace in this life until I quit, so we are going to have to quit. That was the moment I knew I was gonna get sober. You have to have peace in this life. Those of you who, who work in the process right now, I, I promise you get what I'm saying. It does not end until it ends with sobriety for a lot of us. Some people, you know, I think can accept, yeah, all this craziness I do, drunk is, is, is fine, it's me, whatever. I couldn't, I know a lot of other people can't. And the only way to ever find peace and the only way to ever, you know what I mean, be living the life you were supposed to live and to actually be you is to quit. And so, like I said, it took many years, it took a few years after this. Um, I feel like soon after I got sober for like a year and a half, then I relapsed again. And then I got on this, this, this uh, train of sobriety I'm on. So it took, it took a couple of years after that for me to actually get sober, sober, sober. But that was the moment that I knew I was gonna get sober and eventually live a sober lifestyle. And, and I always had that moment to look back on, even to this day. Which, you know, these days I feel so blessed that it, it, drinking doesn't even pop in my head. But if it ever did, I have that moment and I know, oh yeah, Timur, you know you're not gonna find peace. You gotta get sober. When I relapsed after a year and a half, you know what I mean? I knew eventually I was gonna quit again. I, I, you mean, I just knew it. I said, yeah, Tim, you out here having fun right now, but this ain't you. The whole time I knew it wasn't me. And once you realize it's not you, then you realize you gotta quit. 
And of course, as I'm always saying, um, working the process, which is not easy, which is not fun, which is a pain, is really the only way to quit. It's really the every day you can make yourself not drink, don't drink, you'll slowly over time, uh, you know, rewire your brain to realize you don't have to drink. It's hard, it's tough, it's boring, I know. But once you realize, hey, I have to do this or I'm never gonna achieve the things I want in life, I'm never gonna find peace, I'm never gonna feel like me, that's a powerful motivation like subconsciously and consciously to keep you working the process. Once again, it ain't easy. It's hard, it sucks, but it is worth it. It's worth it to go through hell for a year or two or however long it takes. It might not take you that long, but it's worth it to go through hell to get to heaven, to get to a place where like, I know now every single day is like me. You know what I mean? My life now is not moments of me being me and other moments of the alcohol taking over. My life now is all me. Every single action, every single thing I do in my life is all me now. And that's the beautiful thing. Because when I do mess up, I can fix it now because I'm in my right mind. You know what I mean? But most of the time, now that we've cut out the drinking, we, we, do, we do pretty good. Proud of my life right now. I'm proud of who I am. And it feels good to be able to say that. For so long, it was just so much shame and guilt and just, I wasn't proud of my life. I wasn't proud of who I was and what I was doing. And it's worth it to go through hell for a year or two or whatever to get to that point. So that's my video for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comment box below. And just, just real quick, I wanna say, you will quit. You're going to quit. Talk to y'all later.